ですか This is Damon Bungard from Iran Coolers here in Tennessee, and today I'm out with my friend, Mr. Timber Rattlesnake. It's the off season, and if you listen to me on Randy Newberg's podcast, hi Randy, um, you know how I like to photograph and hunt for snakes. So today I'm out on a camera safari. I'm out doing some early season scouting, looking for deer and hog and other sign. And at the same time, I'm trying to check and rock out crops for rattlesnakes. And there's a timber rattler right down there. Now he's safely out of range. He's about six feet away, can't harm me here. And I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the tools that I carry when I'm out looking for snakes. And it gets a little geeky, but hope you enjoy it. So one of the key things always to have is a good pair of uh, snake tongs. Now these are from Midwest Tongs. Uh, very popular with zookeepers and professional snake keepers. These are their M1 collapsibles. I like them because I can fly with them. They break in half pretty easily. Um, I won't do it here, but they really nice tool for protecting yourself and keeping your distance away from a snake. And you can help manipulate the snake into a good uh, camera pose position. Obviously, I'm out on a, on a photo safari, so I have my day pack. Uh, on the day pack, I will keep usually a little machete of some kind for, for clearing brush and clearing shots. This is uh, the Benchmade uh, Bolo, <clears throat> Fungal Bolo. So it straps nicely to the side here, my uh, little Sitka Day Pack. Inside there is where then I keep my SLR. So I'll try to mix some photos into this, but I like, the, this is the Nikon D7500, and I only carry one lens, and that's the 18 to 300 millimeter. And this lens, Let's me zoom way in so I can get nice close up without actually getting too close to that snake. So from here, you know, I, I'm able to zoom in. And I can fill the frame with just his face. So really nice setup and has more capabilities than I am good at with a with a camera, with an SLR, but this is my camera of choice to carry. I keep that in a little uh, low pro pack in my day pack. And then I also use a GoPro like I'm recording now and I'll use that on a boom stick to get in close for some GoPro shots. Now the other devices that I like to bring along are uh, for recording data. I, I like to, to record weather information, uh, things like relative humidity, temperature, ground temperature, snake body temperature. Now, I like to record those things so that when I'm looking at future dates, I can kind of, you can kind of start to really learn the habitat they really, really like. Now it's late July. It's not a really good time to be out looking for snakes because it's so hot, they tend to be really, really nocturnal. Now last night, though, it happened to get down in the 50s here in Tennessee. 
so this morning I came out knowing it's cool I came out to some spots that are likely for rattlesnakes to be sunning nice exposed rocky bluffs like we're sitting on and lo and behold found a timber to photograph so that's what I was saying is the things for recording weather information this is a little tool the Brutton ADC I've had this for years it has a wind recorder but it also has a readout there for relative humidity and temperature so I can record all that information and I, I keep a little spreadsheet in my phone and an Excel file where I record species, date found, and some of the relevant information uh, like that for the environmental stuff. I also then, for telling the body temperature of the snake and the ground temperature, I have this little, it's called Temp Gun, the PE-1. It's actually a laser that I can fire and it reads the temperature of what the surface is. So my hand is 87.6. Uh, I'll get closer to the snake and it's showing 77. Um, I need to be a couple feet closer, but again, I can record then the ground temperature of the rocks he's laying on and then the body temperature, so I can kind of get a feel for what they're kind of, how they're kind of trying to thermoregulate themselves. And that's what snakes do, they're cold-blooded, so they're gonna, when it's cold, they're gonna wanna warm themselves. When it's hot, they'll look for cool. So you can kind of key in on some of the key temperature zones the snakes like to hang out in. And last, I carry, a little digital scale so this can come on and I can put them in a snake bag I'll tear it out in the snake bag then I can hang them and I can weigh his weight and record his, his or her weight and then record that all in my spreadsheet and that's just kind of cool information for me to look back on and learn over time best kind of habitats and places to find snakes now, people are going to be wondering, okay, well, you're out snake hunting, why are you carrying a pistol? I'm carrying a pistol because there's a lot of hogs and like coyotes around here. I'm going through boulder fields just last week. I was looking in a big pile of granite rock, and a nice big boar came out at me about 20 yards. So, that's why I do it. Well, that's a little rundown of my snake photography hunting out setup. Uh, any questions, feel free to fire down below. Um, I do I quite enjoy snakes. You need to know your, your state regulations, anywhere you're out looking for them. Um, collecting is usually illegal. Uh, killing is almost always illegal. And you need to, unless there's some states do allow permits, like Pennsylvania, I think you're allowed one male a season if you apply for a special permit. But beautiful creatures, best left alone. Uh, really fun though to photograph. Just make sure you know what you're doing. Go with a professional, be safe. And again, any questions, feel free to fire them below. See ya.